lyrics of the lost. Welcome back, my curvy little chicos and chicas, as we get into the sweaty Latin rhythms of episode 31 here at Lyrics of the Loco. We deal here, as you know, in the dissection of smooth music lyrics, and you cannot get much more smooth than a song with this title and featuring the lead vocals from Rob Thomas of Matchbox Glen 20. Hey. Because episode 31 is uh, this. What? Oh, come on. No way. Have we been rickrolled? We've been rickrolled. <sighs> Are you as angry as I am, Dave? I'm so angry, but I'm mostly angry that uh, we're 17 years late on the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we, we just have to do this now. Um, that's, that's the rules. Yeah. So, Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley, 1987. Written by the infamous writing slash producing trio known as Stock, Aitken and Waterman. Mm, also a law firm. It does sound like a law firm. Mm. Yes. But they wrote a, a lot of cheesy songs in the 80s and used them to turn B-grade Australian teen soapy stars into pop stars, along with others like Rick, Mel and Kim and more. Mm. They did uh, You Spin Me Round by Dead or Alive. That's right, yes. And uh, I think something for Banana or Rama, but ban Banana Rama, not Banana or Rama. <laughs> they were responsible for a lot of the later hits by both Banana and Rama. <laughs> yes. Banana Rama, that could be like a, a cinema scope type uh, presentation. Yeah. Now shown in Banana Rama, but no. And Kylie and Jason. Kylie and Jason, yes. Yeah. The teen soapy actors that outside of Australia and the UK, people might not be too familiar with, but there you go. It's true. Look them up. Yeah. Everyone in the world knows Kylie, surely. She never really made it that big um, in the States, though. I don't think there was ever oh, really? really. Oh. No. I, th I think, uh, yeah, our little girl just uh, never quite cracked it. Oh. Uh, mm. Well, she's just the girl next door. She never did a duet with Madonna in which they tongue kissed each other. So, you know, that's what you need. I think, as a young pop starlet. Can you remind me who did that? Uh, it was Britney Spears I'm thinking of, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that turned out well for her. Yep. She's doing well. Yeah. I think now. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Stock, Aitken, and Waterman. The Guardian newspaper would later refer to the trio as Schlock, Aimless, and Waterdown. Hey! <laughs> ho, ho, ho! That's top flight journalism. <laughs> They're so bitchy at the Guardian. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. That's like uh, schoolyard level wit there. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but uh, the drought conditions in this country are very hard on farmers here, and they need to artificially irrigate their crops. Uh, and uh, one farmer in a typical situation uh, set his son to work doing just that. Uh, but the son complained that his tummy ached from not getting enough to eat uh, in these tough times. And uh, the farmer had to tell him, stop aching and water, man. Oh, I thought you were going to say there was so little food that the stock ate can. Oh, that, that's, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, e either of us could write for The Guardian. We're, we're that good. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, sweet little Rick Astley. He just wants to uh, dance around in a non-threatening way with a sensible haircut, a sports jacket, and a nice pair of neatly ironed, high-waisted slacks. Yes. And uh, yeah, he just sings in a in a calm, not overly passionate voice. Um, quite a deep singing voice for a white boy, but nonetheless, nothing alarming. He's certainly not a psycho, is he? Is he? Or is he? Or is he? Perhaps he is. Or is he? Let's go. To the lyrics. To the lyrics. Thank you. So Rick is uh, singing this song to a girl he knows, and uh, things are starting perhaps to get a bit flirty. Ooh. So uh, here we go. We're no strangers to love. We're no strangers to love. 
you know the rules and so do I. So he's laying down the law here straight away. Mm. Seems like uh, Rick is uh, hes trying to cut short the idea of any more flirting or romance. He doesn't like any of that stuff. hes He just likes plain speaking. Yeah. We're no strangers to love. That's, uh, that's Rick's way of saying, you seem like you've been around a bit, like- mm. uh, like you've seen a lot of action. Yeah. Uh, that's what every girl wants to hear. Wants to hear. You've been around the block a few times. Yeah. You know the rules and so do I. That, which I think that sounds a bit threatening. You know the rules. Don't make me tell you. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't mind if you did actually explain what the rules were in this situation because <laughs> I'm not sure I know. Yeah. I, I'm not sure there are rules uh, to love. But, and, but are these his rules? We, we don't know. Mm. But anyway, she better know them because, uh, yeah, you know the rules. Don't mess me around, right? Yeah. Well, I really hope they're playing by the same set of rules. I mean, nobody's clarifying here. Yeah, that's right. There could be, um, there could be ladies' rules and men's rules. Like uh, in golf, they get to tee off from different lines. Well, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, sometimes there's uh, different regional rules for different things. Yeah, yeah. Poker and so on, I think. I don't really know. So one of them could be playing cricket. The other one could be playing baseball. It's Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well said. Metaphorically, of course. Yeah. Um, later in the song, uh, Rick sings, We've known each other for so long. We've known each other for so long. And uh, I think that might imply that neither of them were each other's first choice. Mm. But here we are sometime later, and they're both still single and uh, perhaps at a loose end. So back to the first verse. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. So I've decided I can't be asked anymore and I'm ready to settle for you. So uh, let's do this now. Well, that's right. So looking at the first line, yeah, they probably both had a string of failed in relationships. Hmm. The bloke, maybe he's just completely incapable of love and she's so worn down and disappointed. Uh, hopefully, she'll be prepared to accept anybody and uh, keep her standards low. Yes, well, I think that's yeah. that's what he's going to try and yes. intimidate her to do in this next well, line. Well, exactly. Let's let's be honest here. He's saying this is the best offer you're likely to get. Yes, the line is. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. Yep. Yeah, I'm the best offer you're going to get. Trust me, you're not worth anything better. No one else wants you, and because I've told you that now, yep. you don't need to wait around any longer, and you certainly don't need to talk to any other guys. There's just no point. Yep. Yep. Full on gaslighting and yep. uh, coercive control, perhaps. And uh, that's just in the first verse. Yep. And I've had no better offers, uh, and I would like you to be contractually obliged to stay with me. <laughs> yep. It's full commitment at time. Yep. Don't mess about. Come on, let's go. Yep. And he talks about full commitment mm. in this first verse, but then later he sings that this is a game and we're going to play it. So he's trying to keep her a bit confused, uncertain, unstable. So, uh, yeah, he can keep her malleable. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but at no point does he actually mention that he has any particular feelings for it at all. Is, is, is there any... Oh, well, there's no strangers to love, but he doesn't... Actually... There's no strangers to love, but he doesn't definitely doesn't say he loves her mm. or anything, really. Yeah. Keeping his cards very close to his chest. There's the bit about... I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. You know, I've got to tell you how I'm feeling. Although, yeah, he's <laughs> feeling transactional, I think, is how he's feeling. <laughs> yes, and... Got him. Got to make you understand. Mm. No, you don't. You don't need to make her do anything, Rick. Also, your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. Your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. That's Rick basically telling her that she's already given consent. Uh, she's just not said it out loud. Uh, she was consenting, Your Honour. She she was just too shy to say it. Case dismissed. Well, yeah. The another way of looking at that is. Um you know, they've been aware of each other for quite some time, uh, but neither of them have been sufficiently attracted or interested in each other to bother making any kind of romantic move. Yeah. Not their first choice. <laughs> Not their first choice. They may have barely spoken, 
but now they've got to the point where they're basically each other's only viable option. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a modern love story. <laughs> yeah, this was pre-internet where uh, you had to meet people in the real world and um, just be forced to deal with whatever's presented to you. And uh, <laughs> well, that's right. you couldn't narrow down your selection by um, you know geographical area, interests, and all, no. all that sort of no. filters. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing that things ever turned out well in those days, but yeah, if you didn't happen to just chance upon your soulmate completely by chance, yeah, you were never going to meet them. Bloody chaos it is. Yeah, appalling. How did the human race survive this long? I don't know. Uh, back to the song. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the chorus. <laughs> Let's not get too more. <laughs> not get too wrapped up in ourselves. Let's keep this about the uh, <laughs> the subject. Yeah. Yes. So we come to the chorus, and it's. It's a barrage of commitments. Uh, we don't know if she's asked for these commitments and uh, she might not want them. But nonetheless, he's never going to give you up. And even if you want to get away, he's never going to say goodbye. And he's also never going to hurt you because even when he does hurt you, it's probably going to be your fault. Look what you made me do, he might say. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite horrifying, potentially. Yeah, it does come across as a little bit of a threat. Mm. He's promising to be faithful and reliable and to never, ever leave her. Yes. And he's not going to let her leave either. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, so no strangers to love. You know the rules. You know the game and we're going to play it. So love is a game, uh, but at least uh, it has some rules. Um, so, yeah, what are the rules of love, Dave? Well, I don't know. It's... Um... <laughs> As Amy Winehouse said, love is a losing game. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's deep and maudlin again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. As for rules, um, I've I've tried to identify some rules. Assuming love is a game. Uh, here we go. Uh, you can only score when everyone's on side. That's that's the first one. Sure. Uh, your tackle must be below the waist. Otherwise, it's weird for it to be anywhere else. Sometimes handling the ball incurs a penalty. <laughs> if you're going to go for a head-high tackle, you should at least ask for consent. Well, yes, exactly. And uh, if you're not up by the count of 10, uh, you're out. It's all over. Yeah. Play stops if someone goes out of bounds. Uh, you can stop halfway for oranges and Gatorade if you want. <laughs> no problem there. Uh, dribbling is okay. And uh, it could even be a sign play is going well. Yeah. But spitting is frowned upon unless it's being used as lube. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, both teams have to agree on uh, whether you're playing full contact or just touch and uh, whether performance enhancing drugs are allowed mm. and uh, whether there will be any video replays. And uh, and it's always a good idea to hit the showers afterward, um, especially if you've- If not before. Oh, yes, both sides. <laughs> especially, especially if you've been playing <clears throat> in muddy conditions. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. I was also thinking that Rick and the writers have maybe made this song as a commentary on the spin of modern day politics and media ethics. Oh. Yes. Um, we're only hearing one side of the conversation in this song. Uh, and the key is to imagine that he's singing not just to you, a girl, but also to a pack of journalists after he's announced his intention to run for office. Ah. Uh. Running for the official position of your boyfriend. <laughs> <clears throat> now, we, we don't get to hear what they're asking. But the journalists have secured a bunch of concessions, like they do in pursuit of the gotcha moment mm. to catch a, a politician out. Like, will you rule out introducing any new taxes if you win a term in government? They always try and get these sort of pre-election commitments to corner, ah. corner the candidate. And it seems Rick has been maybe a bit of an amateur at managing this. Uh, will you rule out letting us down? Uh, yes, I'm never going to let you down. Uh, will you commit on the record to not making us cry? Yep. I'm never going to make you cry. And uh, further to that, I'm never going to say goodbye. And on it goes until he's uh, on the record with a bunch of promises they can use against him later. Yeah, I, I think he's 
Making too much of a commitment there. Yes. I would say he would be advised not to make those commitments. Yes. And Rick will soon realise that he has just severely limited the policy levers he can pull when governing the relationship as your boyfriend. And when he gets well into the term of this relationship, Rick may find that he has to be pragmatic and, and will have to admit, yes, I did say seven times that I would never give you up. And I, uh, I made those commitments in good faith uh, amidst the economic outlook uh, of that time, uh, relying on projections that were given to me by Treasury. Uh, however, the economic circumstances have changed, and I believe that you will appreciate that I must now uh, give you up and indeed run around and desert you. And uh, uh, this is largely because of the terrible state of affairs that your previous boyfriend uh, left things in. Uh, he's back flipping. Uh, he's flip flopping. Yes, yes. It's the situation I inherited. It's, it's. Uh, we've, mm. we've, we've had to manage our way out of this. Always blame the previous incumbent. That's right. Mm. Well, there's some nice uh, greeting cards, dear incumbent. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, I am a little concerned about the never going to say goodbye part. Well, yes. Is he just revealed that he intends to be a? Dictator president for in perpetuity. Mm. Shades of Trump about it there. Yes. Yeah, well, yes. Just getting back to what we were talking about before uh, with the sort of fairly brutal honesty about the relationship and the lack of any kind of love or affection. Yes. It's very jaded. Just thinking, yes. It's very jaded. And where he says, uh, I'm never going to tell a lie and hurt you. <laughs> I'm never going to make you cry. Well- Maybe he's not going to make her cry directly, but I would have thought, given that what he's just said with his weaponized honesty, I would say she's probably going to start crying every morning when she wakes up. Yeah, he's saying it's your choice to cry or not. I'm not making you. <laughs> well, I'm I'm just telling you my truth. <laughs> it's just plain speaking. I'll just tell it how it is. Plain speaking. Yep. You get what you see. So. He's not going to tell a lie and hurt her. He's not going to make her cry directly, but she's going to cry every single day when she remembers she's trapped forever in this dull, lifeless drudgery of an existence with a man. Mm. And I think maybe she's going to cry every night when she goes to sleep. Yeah. Welcome to marriage. Yeah. I think she would have been happy if he'd actually continued to lie. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's sweet little lies, you know. Ah, yes. Tell Sometimes telling a lie will prevent someone crying. Yeah, in the short term anyway, and that's what counts. <laughs> if that's what it takes to get you out of an unpleasant situation. <laughs> exactly. I've got an alternative view. Yes? He says shuffling his pages. Um, hang on, I've got page five. That's good. Page four. Here we are. Yes. Are we in volume one or volume two? <laughs> this is, uh, this is vol volume one. Page four, chapter seven, verse 26. Excellent. So, look, I've been thinking of this idea of love and devotion in a kind of different way, looking at more of a kind of a love-hate type of situation. Uh-huh. Enemies who are also kind of obsessed with each other. Are they frenemies? Frenemies, exactly. So, I'm thinking Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. Oh, yeah. If you like Doctor Who, you've got the Doctor and the Master, James Bond and every female agent ever. Hmm. Or possibly Blofeld. Hmm. Like the TV show Killing Eve. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where you had the fairly pedestrian, innocuous, office-based Secret Service agent trying to track down hmm. um, the psychopathic assassin. They're enemies, but they're con constantly fascinated or, or even becoming obsessed with each other. Hmm. You know, it's an intellectual thing. It's about excitement. Maybe there's a sexual element. You know, all of those things. Yes, that really good female comedy writer lady. What's that? Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Waller yes, yes, yes. Do you think she was actually trying to say that James Bond is, is basically quite homoerotic and um, that's maybe why the arch nemesis never kills him outright? Well- They really just want to make love? Yes. <laughs> Ab absolutely. Yes, 100%. Right, right. Yeah. They're mortal enemies, but they're so fascinated with each other, they just can't leave each other alone. Mm. Um, and you could say they can't live without each other. <laughs> so, in the song, Rick is portraying an international super spy oh. chasing his evil counterpart, let's call him Jason, mm -hmm. uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. 
trying to thwart whatever his evil plans are for creating chaos, world domination, you know, that stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know the rules and so do I. So we get to the line, you know the rules and so do I. Mm-hmm. There's a double meaning there. Is it a game mm. or is it deadly serious? It's a deadly game of cat and mouse. Wow. Yet they carry out this game with honour and respect. They play by the rules. Uh, no cheating, you know. Mm. They've probably both had opportunities to kill each other several times, but they just can't bring themselves to do it. That would be against the rules of their game. And it's, it's, very, it's a very British, you know, sort of James Bond-esque sort of thing to be a, a gentleman spy. Absolutely. Yes. Also, as all international super spies do, Rick and Jason meet at the casino. Mm-hmm. So they're playing a game against each other at the casino, exchanging their witty, slightly flirty, but also threatening quips mm-hmm. uh, over the roulette table. <laughs> and Rick knows that no other super spy would be a match for Jason's evil assassin slash spy skills, <laughs> which is where he sings, you wouldn't get this from any other guy. Mm-hmm. Mm. We've known each other for so long. So they've known each other for so long. Mm-hmm. Rick and Jason were both recruited to MI6 together, but uh, while Rick committed himself to serving Her Majesty, as it was at the time, uh, and the good of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Jason was tempted down the path of evil, Ooh. and now he serves a more nefarious purpose. This sounds a bit like the plot to Goldeneye. We had Pierce Brosnan and you had, what's that other Irish actor from Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings? Sean Bean. Sean Bean, of course. And he was a he was 005 or 11 or something. Oh, I don't know. I've totally forgotten anything about Goldeneye. Yes. Yeah. And they would say before when they're about to start a mission, for England, James. Ah, yes. And uh, that's also the line he delivers before he falls to his death, ultimately. Ah. Uh, so had he kind of redeemed himself by the end? No, no. He was, he was totally evil. Oh, okay. Because what I'm seeing in this particular situation is that Rick knows that there is still good in Jason's heart. Mm -hmm. And he knows that Jason has some doubts about his evil purpose. So this is where he sings, your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it. I think Mm -hmm. being an evil spy, he's probably not just too shy to say it. If he did say it, he would get murdered by somebody. So fair enough. It's not Jason Bourne, is it? Because Jason Bourne, uh, he was quite a good guy, I believe. Although he did turn against he did break the rules and go against his uh, handlers. Well, no, I just chose the name Jason totally at random from other oh, okay. Stock Aitken Waterman artists. Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was either that or Kylie. Of course. Uh, where are we? <laughs> oh, yes. His heart's been aching, but he's too shy to say it. And Rick thinks that maybe he can be convinced to return to the side of good and return to Her Majesty's service. Oh. As I've said before, maybe there's some kind of homoerotic thing going on, a little bit of sexual tension there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're like brothers, best friends who've become enemies. Much like, say, Obi-Wan and Anakin. As Obi-Wan says after chopping Anakin's limbs off and leaving him to barbecue in the lava, You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! (laughs) You were the chosen one. Yes. (laughs) Exactly. But from his perspective, the Jedi were evil. (laughs) Anyway. Mm. Where are we? So they know the game, they're going to play it. They know what their roles are in this deadly international game of whatever. Mm. Now in the chorus, we're flashing forward. This is the end game. The situation is totally unraveled for both protagonists. Mm -hmm. So when Rick has failed to neutralize Jason, his superiors have sent a team of snipers in and Jason has been fatally wounded. Uh Just as he was about to reveal that he has really been working from within the evil organization to bring about its downfall and has, in fact, oh. returned to the forces of good. Oh, that could be something. Yep. Now, at the end of the chorus, Rick is cradling Jason in his arms and singing to him, they will never abandon him. He will never, ever say goodbye. <laughs> However, he knows as he watches the light fade from Jason's eyes as the last flickers of life ebb away with the blood flowing from his wounds that this truly is their last goodbye. That's really beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, never going to give you up. That could be him swearing to Jason that I'll, I'll never give you up to the authorities. Exactly. I'll never turn you in. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. Well, they're both fully committed to their roles in this game, I think. Right. So this song could have been a James Bond uh, theme song, perhaps. Sure. It just had to be the right movie. And just get um, Tom Jones to belt it out. Yep. Instead of Rick Astley, perhaps? Sure. Or Shirley Bassey? Yes. 
Hmm. Never gonna give you up. <laughs> she did get pretty full on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, that's a different take, indeed. Indeed. Homoerotic spy thriller drama. Yep. It's got everything. It's got everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was interested in the line, uh, never going to run around and desert you. I think that's Rick saying he's taking this love seriously and he won't run around in the sense of running around with other girls. These are good time girls that uh, are, are apparently out there and you can run around with. Oh, yes. And in doing so, uh, he would be deserting you by, by leaving you alone. Yeah. So that's possibly what he means. But equally, uh, Rick could be saying he'll never, in the slapstick sense, run around, mm. as in uh, comically, uh, running around in circles and perhaps in big clown shoes uh, before deserting you with a big cream pie dessert to the face. Ah, yes. Yes. He's, saying, he's still saying he won't do that. Yeah. Uh, again, because he's taking this love seriously. But it's a mark of sophistication, I think, in the writing that you can you can take the the lyrics literally or figuratively, uh, and still arrive at the same message and meaning. Mm. Yeah. So, and I think the uh, yeah the slapstick visual really could have added something to the music video, uh, <laughs> which is otherwise pretty stock standard, pretty basic, pretty yeah low budget. I think if you added some. If you added some custard pies to the acrobatic barman, that would have been quite cool. Yes, yes. The uh, the overacting bartender who suddenly becomes an acrobat for some reason. Yes. That's that's one interesting point. Yes. In a pretty thin music video. Well, yes, yes. Yeah, low budget. Uh, Rick, apparently, uh, he said that he had to bring his own clothes to wear uh, for the music yep. video. Yeah. And actually, when he's he's dancing at night in his trench coat and there's a, mm. a lighting effect, which I think is the same one they used, uh, we spoke of in uh, Spandau Ballet's clip for True, uh, basically bright light shining through uh, some broken glass. Ah, yes. That's about as experimental yeah. as they get. Yeah. I noticed there's some uh, there were some sunny daytime shots and uh, they got a couple of blonde kids to dance around in the sun so Rick didn't have to. Yes. They, they actually had him dancing in the shade of a tree, which I yeah. think is quite sensible. Yes. If they want to make, you know, Rick a, a sex symbol, they can't have him going all freckly in the sun. So, uh, well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the video must have been doing something right because it's had 1.5 billion views since uh, 2010. Yes, but how much of that is Rick rolling? <laughs> well, <laughs> but I think Rick rolling has been quite good for Rick on the whole. Yeah. He seems to have embraced it quite quite openly, I think. He's, um, yes. We've got quite a healthy take on it. Yeah, yeah. Could be able to laugh at these things, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think um, some interview I saw where he said, well, his, his daughter explained to him, well, they're not actually laughing at him. Hmm. It was um, pretty much a random choice of song from what I gather. Well, I think it had to be cheesy and something people were sick of. <laughs> well, according to one origin story of Rick Rowling, Mm. The guy that did the first Rick Roll chose it because it was just on the top of a list of hit songs from the year that he was born. Oh, really? Yeah. There's probably other origin stories, but that's the one that I saw. Let's see. The first Rick Rolling. It's 2006 or 2007. 2007 is what I've got here. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. 20 years after the song's release. Yeah. Uh, and it was done to fool a bunch of young people who were... Uh, hoping to see a video trailer for the Grand Theft Auto Part 4 video game. Ah. Um, and it had become impossible to view this video game trailer online because it was uh, early low bandwidth days, I suppose. And um, there was such high traffic to see this video that most people couldn't. And so someone decided to troll a whole bunch of these young gamers uh, by sending them a link to, uh, yeah, Rick, never going to give you up. Yes. And it escalated from there. Yeah. Perhaps peaking when uh, YouTube's April Fool's prank a year later uh, linked every video on their front page to Never Gonna Give You Up. Well, there you go. Mm, crazy days. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, I was ready to go on to um, other theories from the internet. Do we want to go for that? We could do that. Or we could talk more about the music video, one or the other. Well, there's such a boring music video. I... Um, 
Uh, it was directed by Simon West, who would go on to direct Con Air with Nicolas Cage and also Lara Croft Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. So okay. he seemed to do all right. I don't know if any of that was due to doing this high profile music video, but. Well, the acrobatic barman probably helped with the stunts. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I had a pretty good look at it and I thought maybe we can get some clues to what the video is about from just looking at Rick's different looks in the video. Mm. So we've got first one, he's dressed up as if he's having an afternoon at the yacht club. Yes, very with nautical. Double breasted. Yes. Yes, double breasted blue blazer and a stripy polo shirt. Yes, yeah, strappy strappy sailor shirt. Yes. A navy navy colouring jacket and stuff. So yeah, it's very nautical. Yes. And he's on stage in front of a very ornate window. It looks like an old church, but it mm. turns out to be a youth club. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just up the road from where they filmed the, the bit where he's outside in front of all the bricks. Okay. Which looked to me like it was a sewer. It turns out it's under a bridge, yeah. but to me it looked like looked like he was in a sewer dressed as a private investigator with his black skivvy and trousers and his pale coloured <laughs> trench coat. And what sort of youth club has a bar in it though? Well, that's true. Yeah. They try and discourage the wayward youths from going down that direction. Well, maybe it's just serving lemonade. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, so we've got we've got the blue blazer in the in the youth club. We've got um, a trench coat apparently in a sewer. Hmm. His third look, I think he's in prison. So, he's wearing lots of <laughs> denim uh, and he's in front of Cyclone a, a fencing, wire fence. Cyclone fencing, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So- that's his third I think look. that's when he's in the dappled sunshine of the tree. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, but that could be the exercise yard of the prison, I think. Yeah, and the, and the, the acrobat bartender uh, makes, a, makes a run for the fence at one point <laughs> and oh, jumps yes. up against it, bounces <laughs> off. So he's trying to escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've got these three different characters played by Rick. Then we've got uh, one blonde woman who dances or rather spins. <laughs> And I, I'd have to say very unenthusiastically <laughs> in front of a white brick wall. Uh, and I think she's also on stage with him at one point with an, along with another woman mm. looking a little bit happier. And we've got the aforementioned acrobatic barman. And there's a, a blonde white guy as well dancing with the blonde white girl. Oh, I totally missed him. Oh. Well, it, they looked similar, but um, yeah, there was definitely a couple. I don't know if they were, they were saying Rick Astley's not going to be able to pull off uh, being a love interest in this video, so we'll have to have yeah. a, a blonde man for the blonde girl. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. Well, mm. Mm. well, that could have changed everything. Look, I, like you, couldn't really discern any real narrative, just lots of cuts between the different locations and the different participants. Mm. But since I had no idea ideas of my own, I did what any creative person would do in the, the modern age, and I put it into ChatGPT and asked it to give me a plot synopsis for a movie. Based on the music video. Yes. So what I put in was, <laughs> uh, write a plot synopsis for a movie featuring a man in a blue blazer singing on a stage in a youth club, a man wearing a trench coat in a sewer, a man wearing denim in prison and an unenthusiastic dancing girl and a barman who can do acrobatics. So I just put in the characters and situations. Uh -huh. And uh, it's come back with a movie called Echoes of Destiny. Ooh. Yeah. It sounds a bit like a James Bond movie title. It does a little bit. Yeah. Here we go. In the heart of a small struggling town, the local youth club is the lifeline for its young residents. Mm. The club is run by Jake, brackets, a man in a blue blazer, mm. a former rock star Ooh. whose dreams were cut short by tragedy. So that could be played by Rick. That's perfect. Yeah. Mm. Determined to give back, he uses his musical talents to inspire the town's youth, performing on stage every weekend to a growing crowd. It's his life story. Yep. Parallel to this vibrant setting, the town hides a darker side. Mm. Detective Sam, brackets, a man wearing a trench coat, is deep undercover, <laughs> investigating a string of disappearances linked to a network of abandoned sewers. I guess hence the deep undercover. Perfect. Yeah. His mission is personal, driven by the mysterious vanishing of his younger brother years ago. <laughs> this would be the third character? No? No, I don't think his younger brother ever appears. In a nearby prison- Okay. David, brackets, a man wearing denim, oh, okay. is serving time for a crime he didn't commit. Hmm. With a history of rebellion, he's resigned to his fate until a chance encounter with a fellow inmate reveals a connection to the sinister events Sam is investigating. Hmm. Determined to clear his name and protect those he loves, David plots an escape. Well, that's just like uh, Nicolas Cage in Con Air. 
He was uh, well, really sentenced there you go. and ah. looking to escape. Ah. Hmm. Meanwhile, at the youth club, all is not perfect. Lily, the club's dancing instructor, I don't know why there's a dancing instructor, feels out of place. Her heart isn't in her routines and her apathy starts affecting the morale of the kids she teaches. Aww. Her lifeline comes in the form of Marco, the charismatic barman who can perform incredible <laughs> acrobatics. His playful spirit- So even ChatGPT doesn't know why there's a, a bar in the uh, youth club. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. But his playful spirit and unwavering support help Lily find joy and her passion again. Oh. As the plot unfolds, these seemingly disparate lives converge. Jake's music draws the attention of the community, including the hidden network Sam is chasing. <laughs> David's daring escape collides with Sam's investigation, leading them both into the heart of the town's underbelly. Oh. In the youth club, a climactic showdown reveals the truth behind the disappearances, testing the resolve and courage of everyone involved. Yikes. Echoes of Destiny is a gripping drama that weaves together the power of music, the resilience of the human spirit, and the strength of community. Each character, bound by fate, must face their past and embrace their true potential to save their town and themselves. <sighs> sent from my iPhone. Oh, no. Not, not the- what was that? <laughs> What's that last bit? Oh, it concludes, it concludes with sent from my iPhone. But- oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that sounds a bit like Pulp Fiction, actually. The uh, seemingly unconnected stories that converge at different points. I think it's a hit. It writes itself. Particularly if you use ChatGPT. Exactly. (laughs) Theories from the internet. Okay. uh, Shall we talk about other theories from the internet then? Sure. Let's do that. On Wikipedia, you'll find the inspiring showbiz fairy tale story behind this song, which is uh, that Rick was talent spotted by Stock Aitken Waterman, but they didn't really do anything to help him out for years, except employed him to make the cups of tea down at the studio uh, as the simple chai waller. But then came his big break because uh, there was a woman that Pete, Pete Waterman had been seeing for three years, Mm -hmm. and Rick Astley was staying with Waterman at the time. And after a three-hour phone call with this woman, Rick said, you're never going to give her up. Ah. And bam, that's apparently the inspiration. Ah. Uh, And uh, Rick didn't get a writing credit, uh, even though, you know, he said that uh, eternal line right there. Well, there's more than one story about how this song was written. Mm -hmm. The one that I read was actually kind of the opposite. It was um, Pete Waterman talking to Rick about Rick's girlfriend. Oh. And how Rick was never going to give her up. Well, well, well. And from what I read, Pete Waterman suggested the concept and the title, whereas Stock and Aitken actually wrote the song. Mm. So Waterman was kind of responsible for the overall vibe. Who will ever know the real truth? Yeah. We'll never know. Although Rick has got a, um autobiography coming up to- Later this year, so maybe it'll be in that. Ah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. A uh, Carrie from Roanoke, Virginia, has uh, agreed with my earlier take. And she says, uh, when the singer tells his lover that she'll never get commitment from any other guy, his claim seems rather manipulative. Mm. On one hand, he could be acknowledging that many guys are jerks, but it does seem a bit controlling. Otherwise, it's a fun song. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. A fun song about desperation and gaslighting. Yeah. And if you just ignore the sociopathy, sociopaths can be, you know, really good fun to hang out with. Sure. I'm sure. Well, I think if if this podcast has taught us anything, it's that. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Time and again. Yeah. User Baron Nocturnus says, this song has lyrics that are so sugary, sweet and horrible for you uh, that it just makes your teeth rot directly out of your head. Wow. So- He's definitely seen past the disturbing bits. He's taken a man look at this. Uh, user 12122121, I hope I spelled that right. He says, I'm going to take a shot at the meaning. Uh, a guy's talking to a girl and he wants to let her know that he's never going to give her up, let her down, run around or desert her. I don't think he'd make her cry, say goodbye, tell a lie or hurt her either. Phew, real tough one. Mm. Got to dig real deep to get the meaning, he says. Sad, naive, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one. 
that is what you'll get if you only look at the surface. And uh, yeah. that's what makes yeah. uh, smooth music so insidious. Such an amateur. Yeah. TR007 says, uh, back in the day, Smash Hits magazine called him Dick Spatley, <laughs> which that sounds just as childish as the Guardian's joke about. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we do have to remember that uh, people had to, to vent even childishly because we were all assaulted with this song with wall-to-wall airplay. Uh, and, so, and sometimes people just need to lash out. Well, you say we're all assaulted by this song, but I think the song was about 37 years old. Mm. Listening to it properly for this, the verses were almost completely unfamiliar to me. As in you never took in the actual lyrics before? No, they just sailed past me. Yeah. I only ever took in the chorus. Again, that's what makes uh, smooth music so insidious. You, yep. you don't even realise the messages you're taking in. No. That's why the work we do is so important, Dave. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Well, I've learned that this song has verses. <laughs> it's good, good to know. Yes. It's not all chorus. Yeah. You've got to eat your veggies before you get to the dessert. True, true. Yeah. Uh, keep it a treat. Mm. Tia continues, this song is about a guy who somehow figures out that a friend is all about him. And no matter what, even if they decide friends with benefits doesn't work, he'll sniff, sniff, never give her up. I think the sniff, sniff is the touching bit of sentiment uh, being alluded to there. Oh, I thought she was just a bit smelly. <laughs> yes, sniffing each other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, he'll never give her up or them or he or whoever. Could be a little grey alien for all we know. Um, it went a bit strange at the end there, but I think she's saying uh, that Rick could be singing to another guy. Uh, it's it's not specific in sexuality, no. Nope. Um, which I I have to accept. Um, many of us project a heteronormative sexuality onto lyrics when it's just not made clear. And uh, yeah, I think that's the case with a lot of uh, songs. Well, true. I mean, there's a whole history of artists who are afraid to come out. Yes, probably because it would might lose them some of their audience if the young girls didn't think they were available to them. Yeah, yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. George Michael. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Uh, got some notable trivia. Yeah, Rick is still working. Uh, he has a new album out this October called Are We There Yet? Mm. So be sure to check that out. Um, and yes, his autobiography called simply Never. That's coming out at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, look, I think Rick is riding this Rick rolling wave quite well. He, um, yeah, you'd think it would have petered out by now, but um, he seems to be more successful than ever. I mean, that album, I think it went to number two in the UK charts. He played two slots at Glastonbury last year, and it was a yes, huge success. Glastonbury, yeah. Um, this, yeah, yeah. Which album are you talking about? Because this one hasn't come out yet. This October. Oh, okay. He had one that came out last year. I think that okay. went to number two. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And he's also performed uh, with the Foo Fighters in concert. Yes. Yes. And uh, Adele released her own uh, tribute song, uh, Rick Rolling in the Deep. Uh, so Really? No. Oh. <laughs> you fell for my little joke. <laughs> uh, gotcha. That's disappointing. Got you a beauty. <laughs> now, uh, yeah, his autobiography uh, is called Never. Yeah. And uh, autobiography means he wrote it himself. Uh, it's not short for automated biography, like he got uh, chat GPT to write it. No. Sure. But uh, in case he did, I also spoke to chat GPT ah. and asked it to write the first paragraph of Rick's autobiography. Oh. And if, if it sounds anything like this when it comes out, we'll know he cheated. Okay. Here it is. Imagine growing up in a small town in Lancashire where the air was filled with the promise of something greater. Yet the road ahead seemed as ordinary as the rain-soaked cobblestones beneath your feet. My name is Rick Astley, and this is the story of how a shy boy with a love for music and an unmistakable voice turned a simple tune into an unforgettable anthem, propelling me from the local choir to the global stage. From the moment I sang my first note, I knew I was never going to give up on my dreams. Sorry, is, is, is this the audiobook version read by David Beckham? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what regional accent I'm doing there. <laughs> Just something to differentiate it from my own voice. Yes. 
Uh, it'd be more high pitched too if it was David Beckham, surely. Sure. But you know, uh, some people say that AI never sounds fresh because it just reworks old content. But then you read something like that, and wow, yeah, this is just like you're there. In 2022, uh, an insurance company called AAA ah. paid to reshoot the whole music video, "Never Gonna Give You Up." In exactly the same way, but with a now 56-year-old Rick Astley. Mm. And uh, that was kind of well done, but I'm not sure what the point of it was, except that it, it was a commercial for how, and uh, I, I will quote the insurance company's uh, blurb, their legendary insurance is never going to let you down with auto and home coverage that would never run around and desert you. Wow. They're no stranger to love. Or exceptional service. Yeah, that's not a stretch at all, is it? That could have been written by ChatGPT as well. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. In 2021, someone uploaded a 10-hour loop of this song on YouTube, which has now been viewed over 4 million times. Mm. I don't know if that's all the way through each time. Probably not. Uh, yeah, and as you said, the official clip uh, is been viewed 1.5 billion times on YouTube. Yeah, and that's only since 2010. So, and that's not it. You know, that misses out on the first few years of Rickrolling. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah, but by comparison, um, "Smooth" by Santana, our original choice, yes. the music video has had a mere 372 million views. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but it's not as good as "Take on Me" by Aha, which has had 1.9 billion views. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel bad, uh, you know, uh, the listeners didn't get to hear us talk about Smooth by Santana and Rob Thomas. Yeah. I, I just wish there was something you could do, Dave. Well, I do, actually. It's, um, uh, well, it does reveal a connection between Santana uh, and Never Gonna Give You Up. Yes. And I, it is a world exclusive. This is a world exclusive, yes. This is a world exclusive. So, as you know, Stock Aitken and Waterman, once they'd written a song, they would often offer it to several different artists before mm. you know, one particular artist recorded the definitive version for release. Oh, yeah. So it's not widely known, but Rick Astley wasn't the first person to record Never Gonna Give You Up. Uh -huh. um, so in the mid-80s, Carlos Santana was looking to go in a different direction. The <laughs> Latin rock thing was getting a bit stale, so he decided to contact Stock Aitken Waterman. Mm. Um, sadly, nothing from this collaboration has ever been released, but I have managed to uncover some of the fruits of their work. We're no strangers to love You know the rules and so do I A full commitment's what I'm thinking of You wouldn't get this from any other guy We've known each other for so long your heart's been aching, but you're too shy to say it Inside we both know what's been going on We know the game, we're gonna play it Never gonna give you up Never gonna let you down Never gonna run around and desert you Cause you're so smooth Never gonna make you cry Never gonna say goodbye Never gonna tell a lie And hurt you Forget about it Uh, look, this isn't the full recording. Uh, I have faded it out before the 26-minute conga solo, but I think there's enough <laughs> that you can get the idea. Very good. Uh, yeah, other uh, sort of tributes. In, in 1997, comedians Leno and Woodley did an episode uh, where the two characters, Colin and Frank, uh, were trying to become pop stars. And uh, there's a scene where Colin says... Okay, Frank, Frank. I've worked out some new lyrics for the song we're gonna do at StarQuest Audition, all right? Now, these words are quite revolutionary, okay? They're quite avant-garde. I'm really pushing the envelope on this one. I'm creating a whole new genre of songwriting, okay? This is how the chorus goes, you ready? I'm in love, I'm in love, 
and that's no lie. I'm in love, I'm in love, and I'm never gonna say goodbye. Are people ready for that? I don't care! <laughs> so yeah, uh, never gonna say goodbye. I feel like that might be a tribute uh, to Rick Astley. Sure. Or not. Or not. But yeah, mm. quite amusing. Wizard Critics. What? Whispered Limericks. Sorry. Lizard Clerics. Huh? Misheard Lyrics. So I'm, I'm otherwise ready to go on to misheard lyrics in this song. Yes, and Rick is the only artist we've featured who has provided us with his own misheard lyrics. To his own song? Really? Yes. I mi- How did I miss this? You missed this? He's <laughs> re-recorded a version of the song uh-huh. for Specsavers. Oh. Part of a campaign to encourage people to get their hearing tested. Oh, that's beautiful. And so he's re-recorded it with misheard lyrics. Oh, such as? Such as. All right. So, I haven't recorded all of them, but these here are some of them. So, the chorus, then I'm going to give you up, then I'm going to let you down, (laughs) then I'm going to run around with dessert spoons. (laughs) Okay. Yep. Uh, Then he sings later on, uh, we're no strangers to lunch. (laughs) And I like this one. A broken mitten's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get nits from any other guy. (laughs) Okay. Sure. Yep. And then uh, we've known each other for so long. Your aunt's been naked, but you're too shy to sing. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, I wonder if they yeah. were uh, serious misheard lyrics or whether they just wrote them for this. <laughs> well, they claim that those are the most commonly misheard lyrics, but I couldn't find them from any other source. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think they just made them up. A lot of those seem fresh to me. Yeah. There was one user called Rack Istley. See what he did there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. He says he heard... You know the rules, and so do I. But more ominously, he heard them as, "You know the rules. It's time to die." Ooh. Which, yeah, very dark. Yeah, I was thinking that would make a a pretty good um, teen slasher movie premise, uh, where maybe you know the kids send each other the usual prank link to the music video. Oh ah, yes. But someone accidentally uses a link that they found on the dark web, and it turns ah. out that maybe this copy of Never Gonna Give You Up. The video file is is hosted on Satan's own cloud server, and and when any kid watches it at home in their bedroom, Rick Astley appears from the shadowy corner of the room and uh, wearing his big trench coat probably and a uh, frozen expression on his face, mm. and uh, Rick just strangles them and just summoned every time someone gets Rick rolled, uh. and then maybe the only way to break the curse is to maybe Rick roll uh, Rick Astley himself. Ah. Yeah, I feel like that. Yes. I feel like that could- uh, I like it. That writes itself. Yeah. I'll just get ChatGPT to fill in the blanks and- um, Sure. Yeah, then we're done. Send it straight to the studios. Yeah. An anonymous user heard, got to make you understand as God will make you understand. Uh, God's got to come in somewhere. That's uh, that's a good idea. Uh, You know, if you're a, a cult leader- Uh, wooing a a young member of the flock, you can say, uh, I know this seems wrong, but God will make you understand. Yeah. Creepy. Um, Yeah. Instead of we're no strangers to love, a few people heard Colonel Sanders in love. Yeah. Or Colonel Strange is in love. I'm not really getting the Colonel Sanders one, but sure. Okay. Yeah. I guess uh, syllabically it sort of maybe fits. Yeah. Yeah. And the next line, of course, is, is, you know, the rules and so do I. So that might be the rules of loving a colonel and, and, and maybe keeping quiet about the 11 secret herbs and spices. Yes. <coughs> you've shocked me. No. You've done a spit take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sort of alluded to Rick coming up with this himself. Someone heard, instead of never going to run around and desert you, they heard never going to run around a dessert spoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does sort of invoke images of some sort of quaint English tradition where uh, like, where people circle around a maypole. Ah, oh, yes. Or, yeah. uh, sure, in this case, everyone run around the dessert spoon. Oh, yeah. That could be some sort of um, spring activity yeah. that uh, traditionally is done in small villages. A fork in the road and a spoon in the roundabout, you know. <laughs> yes, very good. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of misheard lyrics in the chorus that are quite violent. Oh, 
I'm going to run around and hurt you, then I'm going to leave you dry, and then I'm going to see you die. Oh, dear. Yeah. That's very dark. Or then uh, I'm going to tell a guy to hurt you. <laughs> I'm still never going to tell a lie. <laughs> I'm going to tell a guy <laughs> to hurt you. <laughs> yeah. I quite liked, instead of inside, we both know what's been going on. Hey, sorry, Bobo, what's been going on? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bobo. Nice. Yeah. Possibly a clown. Yeah. Or Lauren Bobert, the politician. Sorry, Bobo. Well, we never said uh, we'd never say goodbye, and just as well because it's about that time. Well done, everybody. If you've been thinking about pressing the subscribe button, I've noticed it doesn't make your phone blare alert noises or anything at you when there's a new episode out. It's uh, just a silent visual notification in the app and maybe appearing briefly on your home screen. But it's very low key. So uh, press subscribe or follow uh, with confidence. And uh, we now have a new subscription feature that allows you to pay us money. Amazing. People have been waiting for that. We've answered the popular demand. <laughs> and uh, you can now support the valuable work we're doing, you know, if you want. And it gives you access to our full catalogue, including the early pilot episodes. Ooh. We're a, uh, a not-for-profit podcast. Uh, I think our experience bears that out. That's true. Uh, so your support goes directly into making more show. So yay for supporting the arts. Well done, you. Yeah. And why not send us a speakpipe.com slash lyrics and add your uh, own thoughts uh, to the next episode? Please. But until then, bye bye Bye-bye. Thanks, Dave. Lyrics of the Lost. Lost.